Hi, Sonny here and I've been making some sketchbook tours and I'm trying to show the full range like newer sketchbooks, older sketchbooks to, I'm hoping it's going to be encouraging in case uh, you're wanting to get back into sketchbooks um, to be reassured that you can make progress and that they are a fun place to play. So I've got, I, I make all sorts of different types of uh, sketchbooks really. I So this one is back in t around 2020, I think. Yeah, and it's um, one which, this is when I started keeping sketchbooks for different themes. So uh, I decided to get back into life drawing and portrait drawing and to keep it, this is a cheap A4 sketchbook. The paper's I found it very flimsy. So then I ended up sticking in a lot of work. So I'm just gonna show, go have a tour through this one. So yeah, these were like, when I did attend before um, the pandemic hit, life drawing classes in San Francisco. And these are like one minute sketches. And I, I think for me, when I first got into art, like figurative art, life drawing was really, it seemed really, back, it was really important to me to try and um, to get better at it because it felt like I was reading all these books about, back in the 90s about like Degas and or the 80s and 90s about Degas and Toulouse Lautrec and I, I just felt, I was, I guess, you know, we didn't really have the internet back then, so it's very like about traditional um, art education. I was kind of focused on this old style of yeah studying from life so and I still believe that I still you know if I can I'd love to go to um, real life life drawing classes I'm definitely there for it but um now I'm much more playful and uh I just want to have a go at different ways of working as well so trying to like break out of a traditional box so then I started to use this um, yeah, when obviously there's lockdowns and things, um, for just getting images online, but then how could I play around with it in my own way? So here I've, I, could, uh, I found some sort of portraits online, some Florentine artist, um, and I've used Posca pens and just, you know, deliberately coloured skins, different colours, and it was more about making for me a changing an image, like what could I do to an image? Same time, I'm still drawing from life, but using myself here as a model and the kids were obviously on hand as they're very good. Um, and I know that I'm always gonna be wanting to draw them. Or I take, if I, photos of them and then draw from the photos on my phone. I really like this one. This is my youngest when he was sort of lying on a sofa. And um, this is how I used to draw actually when I was 18. I remember when I was doing A-levels, I used to love to fill in a page and just do, it was about the lines. I was really into line drawing. And I think in some ways I still am. Playing around with my hand, drawing my hand. Of the kids. Oh, I like these. So then, yeah, I, I just had I had these old snippets of paper. And I feel like when you're using scraps of paper, there's so low pressure, like you can just draw what you want to do. But they, sometimes I was like, oh, I really like that and I want to keep it. So then I just glue them in here, which is why actually, if you have accidentally bought a low quality sketchbook, have a think about using it as a place for collage, for, for or for uh, like a scrapbook, pasting in drawings that you want to keep. So yeah, there's something quite like the effect of having a, a block paint background and then sticking these, sticking these little snippets of quick drawings on top that otherwise would probably end up in a recycling bin or a box somewhere. The kids at home, because it was, yeah, we were all stuck at home. Yeah, so I remember that time I was super like just looking for escape and wanting to, um, Sometimes I wanted colour, drawing. I think I understand now that if I am going to sketch people from life, these are often going to be really quick sketches. Oh, this was when the kids were doing um, PE classes, trying to sketch them doing their physical education classes outside the yard. 
drawing, I think it was from selfies I took of myself. These were fun, like a bit weird, but yeah, that was just really, I think this is like cheap children's oil pastels and just using a reference photo of someone, but it's not them because I'm completely altering it and making sort of my own characters really. And then watercolour, I was really trying out, here I'm trying out just very faint watercolour. Um, how, what was the bare minimum I can get away with, that sort of pastel tones. Yeah, I really like this effect of cutting, mixing and matching things. I just feel like it makes the sketchbook much more interesting. Some more detailed watercolour portraits, and then I try to do from a selfie of myself. And then sometimes I'd do a bigger piece of um, a painting, but I wouldn't like the other bits. I'd just cut out the bit that I wanted to keep as a reference that I thought worked. There's something about those colours that I felt worked well. Okay, this is a pretty big sketchbook, so I'm. I'm going to actually go through. Now I've explained that it is just for figurative work, really. Oh, I'll go through the pages quite quickly. But, uh, this, yeah, this sort of spread, I just, I really enjoy putting together. And um, when I look back on it, I'm like, oh, I did give things, I've given lots of things a go. And, you know, this, yeah, a, portraits on abstract backgrounds. I don't necessarily do that anymore, but it's something I might, maybe I might work on a finished, um, use it on a canvas now. I could go back to that technique. I quite like this as well, with the brush pen. We have brush pens, I do love like, working quickly with brush, with the um, Pentel brush pens. A lot of the time I like to go to old paintings as well and draw them in my draw them quickly or use them as a, to a sort of master copy. That was from myself. This is from the kids in the park. I think these are from photos because I have to say this I didn't take the sketchbook out with me anywhere because it's quite big. It was one that I just worked at at home. This is one of my favourites, and this is a, if anybody keeps, if you've got, um, when you're testing out colours like acrylic or gouache on old, this is really cheap paper. Um, I like to keep, I used to keep these bits of paper and then I draw portraits on top of them. And I really, I really love that effect. That's something that's a good reminder to myself and um, what to do with all these old sheets. Yeah, this is one of my favourite, favourite portraits that I did at that time. I think something just about it emerging. You've got this base, that, and then there's something about, yeah, the marks coming through, but how at the same time can you make it, um, you know, a, a portrait? So, really playing around. And this is unfinished for me. I generally like to fill up sketchbook pages. I, this is another page I like because of the use I've used I said what I've used, like a red, I don't know what this is, a red fine liner. Here, this was like an acrylic, an old, I was using our old acrylic ink. So I was painting with a brush, like how do you draw people with a brush? Because it's, it's pretty tricky. So, very, very quick. Drawing with it, yeah, drawing with a brush with leftover acryl gouache. And I think I've put a lot of the time, it doesn't, these sort of, draw, draw, when I draw with a brush, it doesn't even look like the reference a lot of the time. Jay making himself some noodles for lunch. Playing around with a bit of collaged um, origami paper. Oh, and then I really love, I think I've got one to hand, I really love these, um, those pencils which have multicolours in one lead, the rainbow pencils. Again, 
I, I struggle with Posca pens. Like I've got a few. I'm not sure I'd get a load more because um, but I do quite like them in portraits for just a more graphic effect. And this is like a crazy page, but that's the sort of thing like. I actually like looking back at there's lots of just snippets of people and myself i remember reading like self-portraits i've been doing quite a lot of them because it's, it's, it's easy to get a reference using yourself i feel a bit more comfortable like if i'm going to try and draw accurately drawing someone i know in real real life um and and uh i'm also aware <laughs> of uh, Chantelle, is it Chantelle Joffrey? She did the uh, self-portrait like every single day for a year, which is pretty impressive. I don't, it is hard to like look at yourself and I don't know, <laughs> to draw yourself again and again, but it's a good exercise and um, I feel like I'm getting more comfortable now with, uh, with doing self-portraits. Oh, this was good fun. I had these like snippets of watercolour paper and then I do like leftover and then I do these like tiny little drawings from, um, I think they're like bronze uh, heads from Roman or from Roman times or, um, look, yeah, uh, trying to copy old masters and drawings from books. I'd, I'd try to look at the other reason sometimes you can use yourself as a reference is I found it otherwise you spent I spent ages trying to find um interesting uh pictures online like of, of where figures are holding different poses so um sometimes you can just use yourself as a model makes it easier like, yeah so I something I would like to go back to is I do love these little how I've done these little head portraits and then adding all the different colours. Whoa, yeah. Just filling up the spread there. I quite like the cluttered, cluttered look. Um, and then another, there are obviously uh, online so many good uh, reference sites and you can do, I did draw in a later sketchbook that I'm going to share, I did sign up to draw Brighton, which was fantastic. And um, they do like online life classes. But the only thing I would say with when you do sign up for these things is it's a bit like gym membership. Like you've, you've got to use it. You've got to be at a stage where you're going to probably, if you're paying for it, actually have the time and the inclination to be using it regularly. Because otherwise, if you're only going to be doing it episodically, there are free online resources that um, maybe I can look up and write down the ones which I use at some point. But yeah, museums, on, uh, museums are great at sharing their images now. And I mean, as long as you're not going to be selling the work, you're using it to learn from or making your own, your own art from, um, that's, oh, this has got like a coffee stain, but I quite like that sort of effect. Yeah, and I really enjoy, this is another um, way of drawing I like. That whole when you use, you can't get too detailed with a uh, terrible quality oil pastel. So you get really nice, you're really minimising the face when you draw with um, a thick crayon. As opposed to when you get into like pens, fine liners and things, there's more of a temptation sometimes to um, get, get into the detail. I think I looked up. I think we're stuck at home. I was so bored I was looking at mullets. So I was just drawing the mullets I could. Oh, and then I the one of the kids, they've got a lot of these old notebooks from school that then they barely fill, so then I use them. And I think this page I quite liked because it just visually was a good reminder of me to use different types of paper. Oh, and then there's a letter from my kid. Okay, so that's that one. I hope there's, um, if you're into figure drawing or portrait drawing, it might be a bit of interest to you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.